Hello, and welcome to Admin Chat, sponsored by Executive Secretary Magazine. My name is Debbie Schaefer. I'm also known as the Audacious Admin. Today, I'm going to discuss job seeking tips. Last year, due to a corporate restructuring, I was released from the company I thought I would be at until I retired. Today, I'm going to share with you some of the tips and tricks I picked up during my job search in hopes that if you ever find yourself suddenly back on the job market, you'll be able to avoid some of the stress that I encountered. My first tip for you is don't wait. Don't wait. Keep your resume and LinkedIn profile updated. By keeping these items current, you will save yourself valuable time and stress should you find yourself suddenly on the job market. Keeping them current also allows you to hit the ground running. Be sure to include a link to your LinkedIn profile or online portfolio on your resume. Remember, your resume should be a teaser to get them to a site where they can learn much more about you than they can in a two or three page document. Spell check. Be sure to run spell check. I can't tell you how many resumes I see with spelling and grammar errors. Using spell check can prevent your resume from being discarded. And have a trusted friend or colleague review your resume for accuracy and or errors. They may also be able to provide suggestions on how to improve your document. Although you may want to consider a professional resume writer. Believe me, I know when you're unemployed and watching the budget closely, you do not want to spend unnecessarily. But I truly believe this is a valuable expenditure. Resume writers are not only professional resume writers, but they're experts in making your resume stand out from the applicant pool. During my last search, I decided to invest in a professional resume writer. This was my resume before, and this was my resume after. If you had a stack of resumes on your desk, which one do you think would stand out? Search multiple job titles. Don't let a job title keep you from getting your dream job. Did you know that the administrative field has over 160 job titles? Search broadly. What one company titles administrative assistant, another firm may refer to as executive assistant or office manager. And clean up your social media. According to a national survey conducted on behalf of CareerBuilder, 70% of employers use social media to do screening on candidates before making a hiring decision. If you have anything on your social media, you would not want a prospective employer to see. Either delete it or make it private. Job seeking can be brutal. I suggest you maintain a brag file to reference if you're ever feeling discouraged. A brag file is an online or physical file that contains evidence of your achievements. A brag file can contain thank you notes, awards, letters of reference, testimonials, and basically anything that makes you feel good. Going back for a moment to keeping your profile current, remember, when somebody sends you one of those you've gone above and beyond notes, consider asking them to provide you a recommendation on LinkedIn. Working with recruiters. In a corporate executive board survey of nearly 4,000 job candidates, 25% reported a negative recruiting experience. I definitely fell into that 25% category. If you've decided to work with a recruiter, I have a few suggestions. Make sure that any recruiter that you work with is aware they should not make any changes to your resume without your permission. I've had recruiters change dates and remove positions altogether without consulting me first. Recruiters should not submit your resume without discussing the position and company with you first. If you are working with more than one recruiter, there is a chance the other recruiter may have already submitted you. You may have applied online, or better yet, you may know somebody at the firm that you can leverage for better chances of obtaining that interview. Know your worth. It's okay to submit for a position that's below your desired salary range if the recruiter is going to talk them up to your range. 
A personal story during my last search was I was working with a recruiter on a position supporting a CEO. The recruiter indicated to me that although my ask was above the company's desired salary range, they were going to submit me because they felt I was a good fit. In my interview with the CEO, they disclosed that the recruiter had told them that I was above their pay range, but that they had never provided a pay range. The recruiter had assumed the range to be the national average, and if I had allowed that recruiter to talk me into a lower number, I may have cheated myself out of significant money. Confirm the recruiter's understanding of your role. Advice from my dear friend, Kem Foley, is when working with a recruiter, ask if they are a certified staffing professional and how long they've been making placements in the administrative sector. Unless the recruiter understands your career, they can't really assist you. And keep in contact. Poor communication was the main cause of the candidate's dissatisfaction in the aforementioned survey. Keep in contact, stay fresh in their minds. Request status updates, feedback, or even coaching. Network. Network, network, and network. Very few of my interviews during my search came via recruiters or applying online. Almost all of them came to me via my network. Don't depend on recruiters. Actively market yourself. Use your social media networks. During a previous job search, a friend forwarded me a job description that seemed perfect for me. I applied. A short time later, I received a call from their hiring agent to inform me they were about to make an offer to a candidate, but they would be in touch if it didn't work out. I went to LinkedIn to see if I knew anyone at the company or anyone who knew someone at the company. It turned out a good friend was close friends with the CEO. I called my friend and asked if they would be willing to make a call on my behalf. They did. I received another call from the hiring agent asking if I could come in that day for an interview with the CEO. I did. The next day, I received an offer. Ask for referrals. If you find an open position with a company you're interested in, research to see if you know anyone who works there and would be willing to refer you. An internal referral will get you past those pesky automated systems, and many companies provide employees referral fees, so it's a win-win for all. Attend networking events. I got my current job through a networking event I attended when we moved to Florida. Research to see if there are any administrative professional groups in your area. I would also suggest LinkedIn Local, which are local networking events popping up all over the country designed to take your online networking offline. And be grateful. If somebody forwards you a job description or a link to a job or refers you, make sure you're expressing your gratitude for their assistance with your search. You've landed an interview. Now what? Be sure to research and prepare for your interview. It seems like such simple advice, but you'd be surprised at how many examples there are of candidates who do nothing to prepare. I know of a candidate who was interviewing to support a politician, but did not even know the political affiliation of the person. This was information easily obtained in a basic internet search. The two were of very different mindsets and the partnership would never have worked. With a little research, the candidate could have saved everyone some time. In my previous organization, I was conducting interviews for a new admin to join our team. The first bullet point of the job description indicated we needed a highly organized individual. When asked about strengths and weaknesses during the interview, the candidate indicated that they lacked organization skills. This demonstrated to me that they had not even read the job description. CareerCast advises that getting past a phone screening is tough. So once you've got your foot in the door for a face-to-face -face interview, it's critical to have significant knowledge about the company so you can make a good impression. You should research the skills and experience the company values. 
key players in the organization, news and recent events about the employer, the company's culture, mission, and values, their clients and products and services, the person or people interviewing you, and the inside scoop. Websites such as Glassdoor help job seekers discover information not readily available on the employer's website, such as salary ranges, employee functions and duties, company reviews, and details about the hiring process. Another great site to determine the female friendliness of a potential employer is www.inhersite.com, and that's site, S-I-G-H-T. Work on improving your interview skills. There are numerous free videos on the internet with interview tips, and you can ask a friend to practice interview you. Never take for granted that your interviewer will have a copy of your resume. Be sure to have several copies with you. Why several? If they like you, you may end up meeting more than the person you were originally scheduled. Have questions prepared. You wanna make sure that the culture is a good fit for you, so be prepared with questions to find out, such as, what makes you proud to work at this company? How does the organization support professional development and career growth? What's one thing you would change about the company if you could? What are some of the ways the company celebrates success? How do you, as a manager, support and motivate your team? Are flexible work arrangements available? Or do you have a matching gift program or sponsor local volunteer events? You also want to research who you know that might work at the company. An active employee will be able to provide you an honest read on the company's culture. Be honest. If you lie in an interview, chances are that you will be found out. Your best bet is to just be honest. At a recent panel discussion I attended, an executive discussed the best hiring decision he had ever made. In the interview, the candidate was honest about not having exactly what they were looking for, but stressed that they were a fast learner and hard worker. In the years since he had hired them, they had been promoted multiple times, and he was very happy that he had taken a chance on them. Send thank you notes. Just earlier today, I received this message from a job seeking friend. One of my lead positions is peeve that I haven't sent out thank you notes. I saw them Monday afternoon. I was planning on sending one today. I've seen a lot of press indicating that thank you notes and emails are out of date, but I disagree. And more importantly, many of the executives that I've spoken with disagree. An article on Monster says, most people don't send thank you notes, but HR managers say it's an important part of the interview process if you want to get the job. Sending a thank you note after an interview should be an important part of any job hunting strategy. I would also suggest you do them promptly. Business News Daily says, timing is an important aspect of sending a thank you note. Regardless of the actual schedule of the hiring process, the time between the interview and the thank you note is important. Send a quick thank you or mail your handwritten note within 24 hours. If you don't have strong thank you note writing skills, search for a template online and personalize it. A good thank you note should reference something you discussed during the interview and indicate why you're excited about the prospect of working for the company. And don't stop contact. Don't ghost a potential employer. If you decide to take another position or simply wish to withdraw from the running, have the courtesy to let the company know. Don't just disappear. Keep track of your search. I suggest creating a spreadsheet. My job search lasted three months and my daily job seeking took me to multiple websites, including LinkedIn, Glassdoor, Indeed, and individual company web pages. I applied for approximately 500 jobs. My spreadsheet was an invaluable tool to help me track and follow up.
Your spreadsheet at the very least should contain the company name, the date you applied, the link at which you applied, if you had a referral, and any notes. Be creative. Your objective during your job search is to get noticed by as many people as possible. Some of the items that were successful for me during my search were creating a career portfolio. A career portfolio is a visual representation of your career accomplishments and potential. In addition to your resume, you can include items such as skills, letters of reference, writing samples, examples of projects you've worked on, licenses and certifications, professional development activities, awards, volunteer and community service, and personality testing. It is only limited by your imagination. You may also wish to invest in www.yourname.com and put your resume online. This will allow you to expand upon your skills and career history. And if you meet a potential employer when you don't have your resume handy, it's easy to provide them a link to your online resume. Include this link in the signature file of all of your emails. And speaking of meeting a potential employer when you don't have your resume handy, you may wish to create a calling card for your job search. It should include your name, email, the job you're searching, and a link to your, either your LinkedIn profile or your resume website. You may also wish to consider adding a professional headshot. Write blog and LinkedIn posts. During my search, I wrote a post titled Dear Executive that received thousands of hits and won me multiple interviews. The post was basically a love letter to executives explaining why I was the executive assistant that they needed. In addition to encouraging my network to share the post with anyone they knew seeking an EA, I tagged my dream employers, Richard Branson, Oprah Winfrey, and any others I felt would be great individuals to work with. And tell everyone, you never know who might know of your dream job opening. Try to stay positive. Spending every moment of your day weeding through job sites and job descriptions, tweaking cover letters, and retyping your resume into automated systems can knock the wind out of your sails. Four-hour interviews that don't result in an offer can be discouraging. And believe me, I know how difficult it can be to keep an upbeat attitude when you're on the receiving end of a rejection email. I have some tips that hopefully will help you stay positive when your job hunt is getting you down. Be sure to make time for self-care. Meditate. Read a book. Unplug for an hour, listen to music, or better yet, dance, and speak kindly to yourself. More on this later. Avoid negative influences. They affect your attitude, your thinking, and they drain your energy. Focus on growth. During my search, I did a lot of professional development. I have a LinkedIn learning account and took as many webinars as possible while I had the time. Enhancing my skills and learning new skills made me feel more confident. Help others. Volunteering makes an impact. You gain skills and it gives you an opportunity to network and meet new people. Always valuable during a search. And it looks great on a resume. Laugh. Watch comedians or funny videos and sitcoms. Watch funny animal videos or videos of babies giggling on YouTube. Force yourself to laugh. I know it sounds strange, but it works. Get out of the house. Call a friend to meet you for coffee or take a walk. A change of scenery has the power to change your attitude. 
celebrate the small victories. Even if your victory that day was that you made the bed. Listen to inspirational speakers. This really helped me. Instead of listening to music when I was on the treadmill, I would tune into an inspirational TED talk. Try to keep a routine and set a goal. Before we move on to my next pieces of advice, I want to share a little more about my last job search with you. I found out at the end of July 2017 that my job would be ending in mid-September. I immediately kicked off a search, confident that I would have something by my final day of employment. That is not how it worked out. Because my husband was unhappy in his job, I expanded my search to anywhere in the United States. I had interviews in Northern and Southern California, Washington State, Washington DC, Virginia, Atlanta, and Boston. My final day at my company arrived and I had had a lot of interviews, but few offers. I was getting very nervous. By October, I was panicked. I began the interview process for the company in Florida and exactly four weeks after my final day at my company, despite some red flags, I accepted their job offer. They provided me three weeks to relocate, but we had three months remaining on our lease. I made a plan. I would go ahead of my husband, live in a hotel, put in a couple months at the new company before he put in his notice, and at the end of our lease, he would move. We didn't stick to this plan. I really wish we had stuck to this plan. After sharing the plan with my new employer, they increased my relocation package to include buying us out of the lease. We were dazzled. My husband gave his notice. We packed our home and hit the road. We left DC on a Monday, arrived in Florida on Tuesday. The movers arrived Wednesday, and we spent four days unpacking before I started my new job on Monday. By Friday, I knew I had made a very serious mistake, but I was determined that I could make it work. I went to the experts and I sought guidance on how to make it work. I took their advice and I tried, but I was miserable. After 13 days in professional hell, I left. Here I was in a new state, away from my community, unemployed again. And worse, so was my husband. I followed my own tips and I hit the pavement hard. I sent an SOS to my network and they came through with flying colors. Thanks to a lead from one of my friends, I found a new job within a week. But I would not wish the turmoil of that experience on anyone. So my next tip is accept. If it doesn't happen, it wasn't supposed to be. I love this quote. You need to see that life is not always perfect. We will not always get what we want. And though it hurts a lot, what should have happened, happened. Who should have left, left. And whatever's thrown you off course will always bring you back to where it is you need to be. Don't force it. Don't overvalue an offer because you're feeling desperate. And don't take a job you don't want unless you absolutely must. Pay attention to the red flags. Don't feel pressured or dazzled into a job. And if you do accept a job and you find that it doesn't fit like I did, leave. Learn from the experience and then move on. Failure. Losing a job can feel like failure. Not getting the job you want can feel like failure. Before you beat yourself up, remember the wise words of Katy Perry. Maybe a reason why all the doors are closed is so you can open one that leads you to the perfect road. Failure is an integral part of success. There are simply too many books and quotes from successful people not to believe this to be fact. 
Fail Until You Don't by Bobby Bones. The Wisdom of Failure by Lawrence Weinsheimer and Jim McConaughey. Failing Forward by John Maxwell. Oprah Winfrey says failure is a stepping stone to greatness. Henry Ford said failure is simply the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. Robert Kennedy said only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. And my favorite, Chris Hardwick says no human ever became interesting by not failing. The more you fail and recover and improve, the better you are as a person. Ever meet someone who's always had everything work out for them with zero struggle? They usually have the depth of a puddle or they don't exist. Let's talk for a moment about self-perception. Often the voices in our head can be our biggest saboteurs and we need to make sure that they're not telling us lies. Lies are limiting ideas, eliminating success. Again, lies are limiting ideas, eliminating success. You need to aim high. Don't let the voices in your head prevent you from shooting for the stars. When my husband and I learned not to listen to those doubting voices in our head, I went from an executive assistant to the director of administration. And my husband went from an HR generalist to the vice president of HR. If the voices are telling you that you are not up to that daunting job description or career move, silence them. Have you ever heard Lucy Brazier tell the duck story? We often have a voice like a duck quacking inside our heads, telling us we aren't good enough, aren't smart enough, aren't capable enough to do whatever it is that we wish to do. We must learn to silence them because we are absolutely good enough and smart enough and capable enough. We just need to believe it. Lucy's dear friend, Susie Baron Stubley, kept a rubber duck as a physical symbol of those voices. And if they started quacking, she'd tell them to just shut the duck up. Remember to speak kindly to yourself. I am. I am are two of the most powerful words for what you put after them shapes your reality. I am the audacious admin, Debbie Schaefer. I want to thank Lucy Brazier and the team at Executive Secretary for inviting me to present admin chat and thank you for joining me for job seeking tips. I do hope you picked up something that will help you in your next job search. If you have any questions or you would like to share any of your personal job seeking tips with me, you can reach me at debbies at gmail.com or audaciousadmin.com. Again, thank you for joining me and have a wonderful rest of your day.